Let's bring in uh, John Healy, Shadow Secretary of State for Defence, uh, should we? It's good to see you this morning. Thanks for taking the time. What on earth is happening to the Labour Party in the northwest of England at the moment? We said that uh, we would set the toughest standards um, of our candidates and our MPs. It was part of the change that Keir Starmer committed to making to resurrect and rebuild standards and confidence in public life. And so what we've seen is evidence um, of our candidates saying unacceptable, wrong things. They've been investigated. And in the case of Rochdale and Azar Ali, as soon as new information came to light, Keir Starmer took a very swift decision that he didn't meet the standards that the public have a right to expect. He didn't meet the standards that he expects of Labour candidates fit to stand as Labour MPs. And so we withdrew support for him at a cost to our own party here because we leave the people of Rochdale without a Labour candidate to vote for. But it's a case of Keir Starmer putting country and public standards in public life ahead of our party interests. OK. And then yesterday you had to uh, suspend another. Who else was at this meeting? I've no idea um, who was at that meeting. Let me tell you then, should I? Uh, a chap called Monsiv uh, Dad, he was also at the meet uh, meeting. He's uh, uh, the leader, Labour group leader for Hindburn. He was also at that meeting. Why has he not been suspended? Um, I don't know why he, what he was at the meeting. Why Graham Jones has been suspended is not just for being at the meeting, but it, what's come to light are unacceptable comments that he made that were plain wrong. So he was suspended, then interviewed. And if the party decides, and Keir Starmer decides that he too is not meeting the highest standards that the public have a right to expect, and Keir Starmer insists on in our candidates and wannabe MPs, um, then he will be replaced. I'm surprised that they didn't tell you who else was at the meeting, given that you were coming out to represent Labour this morning. Monsiv Dad, as I said, uh, a senior Labour figure in the northwest of England, he must have heard what these two chaps were saying. Absolutely shocking and indefensible comments. We believe that he's been spoken to. How long before we find out that he's also going to be suspended? You're not ahead of this. But I serve in the shadow cabinet. I lead for Labour on defence. I'm not involved in the... You're coming out... The... No, no, that's not acceptable, Mr Healy. You're out this morning to represent the Labour Party and to defend the Labour Party when it comes to these absolutely unacceptable anti-Semitic uh, remarks that we have heard just a few days after the barbarism of the 7th of October. Two, one uh, was talked to and then subsequently suspended... Uh, when you found out what else he'd been saying because you read about it in the Daily Mail. Another one has now been suspended. And now a third one, another senior Labour figure in the northwest of England, also at that meeting. You need to get ahead of this. Where new information or evidence comes to light, as it did with Azhar Ali, as it has with Graham Jones, then the party will act and Keir Starmer will act swiftly and decisively to make sure that our candidates and our MPs meet the very highest standards that the public have a right to expect and they deserve. It's a far, far, far from the sort of thing that we've seen from the Conservatives over 14 well, we're years. We are talking about the Conservatives this morning. Why did it take you so long then to discipline as a Ali, to find yourself in a position... Well, obviously you did it because uh, you wanted to make sure that he was still representing Labour uh, in Rochdale until you realised that it was indefensible and you had to let him go. You had to sacrifice that seat. Can we agree that anti-Semitism is still a problem in the Labour Party? Well, let's be clear with Azar Ali. Uh, he, made, he made comments that were unacceptable about Israel um, connected to October the 7th and the terrorist invasion. Uh, he was profoundly apologetic, made that apology. He was widely respected. We accepted that apology. apology. He said there was nothing else to come. Further information came to light. And far from taking a long time to act, very swiftly, in light of the new information, immediately, Keir Starmer, when that became clear and was properly established, withdrew our support to Azir Ali. So Labour does not have a candidate in the Rochdale by-election for people to vote for. That's a step that is very unusual, almost unprecedented. It damages the Labour Party, but it is important because... 
Keir Starmer is on a crusade to rebuild public confidence and standards in public life. And you say this is not about the Conservatives, but we have an election tomorrow. We had by-elections yeah, well, last year. I want year. to talk about Labour. I don't want to talk about the Conservatives this well, morning, if you don't mind. Uh, well, if we can, if you'd like, because I want to talk about what happened in Bournemouth East the night before last. Um, uh, someone came on my programme who was um, a Member of Parliament, like you, uh, and then when he went home, it would appear that uh, a member of the Labour Party, or certainly somebody who represented the Labour Party at Bournemouth East in 2019, so again, a senior member of the Labour Party, at least back then, um, organised a pylon. So 100 people gathered outside that man's house uh, to uh, cause issues for his family. She, uh, when, if you look at her profile, um, was a senior member of the Labour Party back in 2019 when she hoped to represent you. She lost by 8,000 votes. What would you say about that? You're telling me something that is entirely new to me. Uh, what, I what I would say is if there are allegations of improper conduct of Labour members, they will be fully investigated. And part of the changes that Keir Starmer has brought in uh, is an independent investigation process. It was part of the Equalities and Human Rights Commission. Uh, changes they required to help Keir Starmer root out anti-Semitism in our party. That has been done. But, you know, Keir Starmer's not creating... That's it. It's they not worked. Always that do things that are wrong, say things that are unacceptable. The important thing is whether parties are willing to act on allegations that come before them. And it is relevant what the Conservatives have done. They had candidates standing as MPs. OK, let me ask you about how the Jewish community should trust the Labour Party going forward. These, these figures. The public deserve better than that. How can the Jewish community trust the Labour Party going forward? Restoring, retaining the trust of the Jewish community and any community is a constant process. And Keir Starmer is deeply, deeply aware of that. Uh, he pledged to root out anti-Semitism as part of the changes he wanted to make to Labour, regarded them as essential. He's done that. But this is not a party of people who are saints, as I say. When people do things that may be wrong, say things that may be unacceptable, the important thing is, how does a party respond? We have an independent investigations process, and when it concerns candidates or MPs, here, Starmer, we expect, as the public does, the very highest standards okay. compatible with our... I'm sorry people... to interrupt you. May we still accept that, uh, agree... Um, then perhaps that anti-Semitism is obviously still a problem in the Labour Party in February of 2024. Anti-Semitism is still a problem throughout our country and part of problem the... in the Labour Party in February of 2024. Wherever wherever there is evidence that there may be anti-Semitic comments or actions, we will investigate. We can't guarantee that no one connected to the Labour Party will ever express something that is wrong or unacceptable. What we can guarantee is that if that happens, we will investigate and, where necessary, we will take action. So it is fundamentally still a problem in 2024 and it's highlighted to the Labour leadership by a story in the Daily Mail. Otherwise, you wouldn't even have known about it. One wonders how much more it is infiltrated within the party, some might say. One of the hats off to the Daily Mail. You know, that's part of the um, important public role that journalists have of all media. Uh, this was information that we weren't aware of, we didn't know about beforehand. When that evidence and that fresh information was presented to the party and where Keith Starmer took a, a, a view on this, within hours, he acted very swiftly to do something no Labour leader or no party leader has done before, which was to suspend the campaigning support for our own candidate in the middle of a by-election in Rochdale. And I feel for the people in Rochdale, um, those who want to vote Labour, who want to protest against the 14 years of failure of the Conservatives, do not have a Labour candidate to vote for in this by-election. Uh, we must leave it there, Mr Healy. Um, I know it's a difficult time um, for you at the moment, so thank you for taking the time to answer my questions. Appreciate it. Thank you.